first things first. I wanted to address this, get this out of the way early. Yes, I am wearing props. They got little pins in them. Um, about five months ago, I bought 100 prop pins on eBay for $5, which is honestly just like such a steal. You guys can put in my TED Talk on that alone. But now I have a large assortment of prop pins so I can match my prop accessories to the rest of my outfit. And trust me, I wear these props everywhere. This is me at the airport. I was going to go visit family in Colorado hoping they would be impressed by my impeccable footwear choices. They were not. This is me at a speech tournament at Stanford University, and in case you still question my dedication, here's me at junior prom. <laughs> now, I'm not gonna lie, it has not been all smooth sailing for me and my cause. Fun fact, puddle jumping is not the greatest activity to do when your shoes have holes in them. Especially if you're wearing fuzzy socks underneath. But beyond that, my friends and classmates continually make fun of my filter choices. In the hallways, people yell things like, Crocodile Dundee, which is classy. And, Hey Megan, there's holes in your rubbers, which is even classier. <laughs> As high schoolers, we are continually faced with pressures to act in a certain way, which in turn causes us to dress a certain way. Watch any good high school movie, and you'll know that the art kids wear too much eyeliner and uh, black sweatshirts. The hashtag skater die click is always portrayed in beanies and thrasher t shirts. And cheerleaders are always portrayed in high curl ponytails and lip gloss smiles. Except these stereotypes are starting to extend off the screens and into our high schools. Every single archetype I just described is represented walking the hallways of my school. Although each team's individuality extends far deeper than what appears on the surface, teams often attach to one broad stereotype and then model their style on the back. Now, I don't know how you all, but I haven't seen a lot of Hollywood movies that feature a 5'11 athletic blonde girl who's also on the Bay team. So I don't really know what Hollywood thinks I should wear. Probably not props, that's for sure. And I know that just like me, every team has an individual narrative that can't be pinned down to cliches. But still, many teams choose to perform. Now, it's no secret that how we dress affects how we think and behave. Boring clothes make us boring people. A study done at the University of Hertfordshire shows that people wearing Superman t-shirts score about 8% higher on mental agility tests than people in plain white t-shirts. I mean, you still can't lift a car, but this just goes to show how the brain subconsciously embodies your physical style. The same study shows that people in lab coats had better scientific capabilities. Women wearing jeans were more prone to depression. And anybody wearing a scrunchie automatically became a Zumba god. Okay, I made the last one up. But the rest were true. A lot of our confidence comes from what we wear, which is one reason it's so wild that so many teens choose to recycle the same boring garments over and over again. We all know that student who stays up until 1 a.m. cramming and then shows up to the 8 a.m. test in sweatpants down in an energy tree. But what if the dress for success motto actually did more to energize the folks you've heard this now? Now, I don't know about you all, but with finals coming up, I'm not trying anything to help me get trained. But still, we see the same boring garments, the same fashion. This is due to a societal pressure to perform. High school serves as a four-year hormone hangover from the chemical rager that was middle school. We are all left dazed and self-conscious, which makes high school a time to time thin air. So that's why we see so many of the same garments, because people just want to know that they're part of a group. This is something that we'll crave for the rest of our lives. 
In the 1951 ASH experiment done at Swarthmore University, we are shown just how proud people are to the core. In this experiment, 18 test subjects were led into a room one by one, where there was a scientist and six actors pretending to be fellow test subjects. They were shown this image and asked which line on the left was the same length as the line on the right. Now the answer is pretty clear, as you can see, but in this experiment, when they were asked the same question, the first actor answered A, and then the next actor answered A. Going down the line, every actor answered A, until they reached the test subject who then felt pressure to conform and answered A. This, in fact, is the result 12 out of 18. People will go against their own Just to put it in This is the basis as to why so many teens dress the same. By wearing that Thrasher t-shirt six days a week, you are showing the world that you are part of a group or a brand that is bigger than you are. This creates a deep-seated fear of showing individuality in high school, even though it might be more important. Now, high school was once described to me as a constant struggle between the desire to stand out and the need to fit in. But I want to get one step further. In your head, there becomes two separate individuals. One who willingly conforms, and one who has every compulsive desire you're too afraid to act on. Um, okay. uh, actually, before I show you this next slide, I want to uh, say a really quick thing. Art is something that's really important to me. I actually have a pretty tiny party hall right now. So um, I wanted to incorporate art into this talk. So these next slides are actually something that I've done myself. I'm not a try hard, it's just something that's important to me. <laughs> this is Emily, which just happens to be the most popular girl's name in 2001, the year I was born. Emily lives in my brain, and she controls what I do and say a good amount of time. Emily likes pop music. She comments fat food on Instagram feeds. Of course, spelling fat with a PH. Emily takes 354 duck flip selfies and then cries for 355 of them look bad. Emily wears skinny jeans and broken stocks every day. She's the epitome of the word basic. She is every stereotype ever given to a female teenager. But just because Emily conforms doesn't mean she doesn't try hard. Emily, in fact, tries pretty dang hard to look fun and appear social because that's how she's told she should be. Now this is Penelope. As you can see, she is wearing props. Penelope's music choice is exclusively a mixtape with the slow part of Come On Eileen on repeat. <laughs> Penelope interrupts class every time she thinks of a good pun. She drives with the windows rolled down no matter what the weather's like. Penelope doesn't wear the same thing every day, but she loves fun footwear, bright colors, big jewelry, and lots of pens. Uh-oh! Bad news! Emily and Penelope do not get along. <laughs> they fight. A lot. Emily represents my need to fit in, while Penelope represents my desire to stand out. When you have two forming box stick figures fighting in your head constantly, it becomes pretty confusing what you should do. Nonetheless, where? And both of the personalities definitely have their faults. I mean, I'm pretty quirky, but Penelope doesn't control my mind all the time. If she did, I'd probably be speaking right now with four more piercings and one less eyebrow. <laughs> I have a weird need to like shake left one off. I don't really know either. <laughs> but if Emily controlled my brain all the time, there'd be no depth to me. I might fit into society and those ideas, but I wouldn't have a lot of friends. People would have bothered getting to know me because everything about me would be expected. This controversy in high school will affect the rest of our lives. This is a chart created by philosopher Eric Erickson. Eric Erickson, that's his real name, that's incredible. 
Erickson believed that at every age of your life, you will face a moral crisis, which means at every age of your life, you will face a moral crisis. So that's super fun. Trust is developed as a virtue from a birth until 18 months, which means how open you are to other people as a baby could determine how open you are to other people for the rest of your life. Now, in your later life, however, from ages 39 through 65, you are faced with generativity versus stagnation, which basically means, are you satisfied with the impact you left on this world? And this is where we get the phrase, midlife crisis from. But if you look at the conflict facing 13 through 21 year olds, it's identity versus war. Knowing and understanding who you are versus settling for control. This translates into fashion more than you would ever realize. If you have the ability to create an individual style for yourself and are comfortable enough to experiment with new books in high school, you will be less likely to face an identity crisis later in life. As important as this sounds, I was curious as to how many of my peers actually felt So I found the survey. 175 students from high schools all across the Pacific Northwest COVID. All sorts of different individuals, all with a different story to tell from the The first question asked, on a scale of one through 10, how much effort do you put into your physical appearance? Now, do a little bit of math. 53.4% of kids rank themselves on a seven or higher. <clears throat> That's pretty incredible, honestly. It shows the true dedication high schoolers put and how they look. With all this effort shown, it's astonishing more people are breaking away from the expected and wearing what they want to wear. Furthermore, the next question listed the top eight style trends for both boys and girls. The list looked like this. And 90% of teens owned and frequently wore one or multiple items on the list, which makes sense because according to the next question, 85.6% of teens felt judged based on what they wore. And 70.1% said that they would drastically change their style if they knew they wouldn't be judged for it. Linking this back to Erickson's chart, this is the time in our lives when our individuality will be set. And the majority of my peers don't feel comfortable enough to explore, to experiment with different styles, to dress in a way that makes you look good and feel good, to wear what you want when you want it. And that's frustrating. That so many people are missing out on this opportunity because of their compulsive need to conform or their fear of being judged. That's frustrating. Now, to finish things up, I actually have one more question on my survey. It asked, do I pull off the cross? With this picture attached. Now, in the 24 hour period my survey was up online, I received eight, count them, eight direct messages on Instagram, five from friends, three from complete strangers that look like this. A screenshot of the last question of my survey with the no, you do not go off the props bubbled in. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Even with this being said, 86.8% of people said I do in fact look stylish in the office. So, what does this mean? It means that 13.2% of people have absolutely no natural sense. <laughs> Kidding! Sort of. It means that no matter how much of a style faux pas Crocs may be, especially those with ridiculous kids in them, people like them because they see it, I like them. I hear what I do with joy, and that's the biggest thing people respond to. The fear of conformity looms so large, but if you can break away from it, and break away from it with confidence, you will fit in more than ever. And that's true for all of life.
So why not start with fashion? Feel free to wear that shirt that you bought five months ago and still haven't taken the tags off yet. Experiment with your makeup. Girl, yes, you can pull off that cat eye. No matter what you do, make it a part of yourself. Thank you.